It's Stacy again, and I'm back with a recipe on making hot rolls. Um, I made got up bright and early this morning, and I made some for church, and so I thought I'd go ahead and do a video showing you guys. I have a lot of friends who are like, Stacy, teach us how to make bread. So I thought with one handy dandy little video that you guys would all be professional bread makers here in, in just another half an hour or an hour once you see this. I'm going to start out in my bowl with three and a quarter cups of bread flour. And I like to cut the top out of my sack once my flour gets down rather than try to dig or um, pour from a full sack. So I usually just cut my sack down as I go along. I've got three and a quarter cups of flour, a third cup of sugar, two tablespoons of yeast, and a half teaspoon of salt. I like to buy my yeast in a jar or a bag and use um, use a little more than what's called for because we really like yeasty flavored dinner rolls and cinnamon rolls. I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of melted or room temperature butter. I'm gonna add in one beaten egg and I'm gonna add in a cup of pretty hot water. I try to make mine pretty hot. Mine's just about perfect out of the tap. You don't want it too hot. All the dry ingredients in the bowl, I mix with my hand. I don't use a sifter because I don't like to do any more dishes than necessary. And um, I probably should use a sifter. But anyway, um, I go ahead and mix all the dry ingredients together, yeast included, because um, this recipe, you don't have to do the, the allowing of the yeast to bubble up for a period of time. I mix in all of my wet ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back to talk to you about forming the rolls. Um, I'm gonna mix and knead for about 10 minutes. So it is a bit of a good workout getting in there and kneading that dough. Good for arm strength. Good for hitting your husband over the head with the frying pan if you need to every now and then. Okay, so give me just a second and I'll get this stuff mixed up and kneaded and then I'll be back to show you how I form the rolls. Okay guys, I went ahead and mixed my dough. I let it rise for an hour with a towel just over the top in a warm place, usually on top of my stove or on top of the dryer if I have the dryer going because I'm doing laundry. Um, and then I just take my dough and I cut it in half once it's risen and I have two equal halves. I try to feel them to see that they weigh about the same amount. And then each half has to make six rolls because this will make this batch will make a dozen rolls. Uh, no matter how ugly your piece of dough is, when you pinch it off, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start and I'm gonna stick two fingers right in the middle and let it rest on there. And I'm just gonna start pulling down all the way around over the top, just to try and smooth it out and make it nice and pretty. I know everybody has their own way of forming the rolls, but to me, this just really seems to work. I have rheumatoid arthritis in my hands, and I try to keep them as active as I can, but sometimes, um, you know, I just am not able to use certain fingers because I had surgery that fused a couple of the, the joints in my uh, index and middle finger on my right hand, which is the hand that I use all the time. So anyway, I do that, and then I have like a little tunnel up inside my dough. It looks like the cap of a mushroom almost. And then I will go ahead and I will grab the bottom on opposite sides and I pinch together. And then I pinch together and I turn my dough and pinch, pinch, pinch until it's puckered looking on the bottom. And then I just roll it in my hand a little bit and I have a perfectly shaped little dough ball that I will put into a greased pan and I will let them rise for another 45 minutes to an hour or until doubled in size and then I will bake them at a 350 degree temperature setting on my oven for about 20 minutes. Now if your oven cooks hotter sometimes it might be 18 sometimes if it doesn't cook quite as hot it might be 22 24 minutes but most generally it's right at the 20 minute mark They'll turn a light golden brown on top, and then I always brush them with melted butter and let them set, and they just kind of absorb that butter. When I'm making rolls, I also always use butter. I use butter in everything, guys. I don't use margarine at all. 
But anyway, that is how you make the rolls. That is how you form the rolls. Place them in a pan, let, cover them up, let them rise for another hour, bake them at 350 for 20 minutes, and you're going to have a very, very happy family. All right, guys, thanks for coming and joining me. Have a great weekend, what's left of it, and a wonderful next week. We'll see you soon.